Certificate trust logs are a security feature designed to prevent attackers from creating malicious subdomains to trick users. Unfortunately, it also creates a list of all the various subdomains that have a certificate attached, sometimes revealing private information a company might not want public. We'll show you how to reveal this information with CT Exposer on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Certificates provide security for websites that use HTTPS, and certificate trust logs provide a measure of security to make sure that fake certificates aren't generated for subdomains that don't exist. Now, this might be an attacker trying to create a phishing page on a domain or some other nefarious use, but for an attacker, the certificate trust logs are actually a valuable source of information themselves. Now, why? Well, actually, we can find information like employee logins, even VPN services, and know a lot more about the infrastructure a company uses in only a single scan. Now, to get started using CT Exposer, you'll just need to have Python. And after that, we can begin. Before using CT Exposer, you'll need to download Python if you don't already have it. You can do so from python.org and make sure to download Python 3 for your operating system. Once you've completed that, you can go to this GitHub link, which is github.com slash chris408 slash ct exposer, and you'll be able to find the GitHub repo here. You can click on clone or download, copy this URL here, and then go into your terminal window and type git clone, and then paste the address here. As soon as it's there, you can type cd and then ct exposer and type ls to see the files inside. Now you'll see that there's a requirements.txt and that will make sure that we have all the requirements taken care of. So to install it, we'll type pip3 install tack r and requirements.txt. When we run this, it should, oops, let me make sure I spell it right. When you run this, it'll go ahead and check to make sure we have all the prerequisites that this file needs. And as we can see, we already have them installed. So next we can go ahead and run this and we're going to pick a target domain to check to see what kind of information we can find. Now the command we're going to use is python3 ctexposer.py tack d and then the domain we want to search. Now we're gonna start out with priceline.com because they have awful service and left me stranded in the desert in Nevada. So once we run the search, we can see there's a number of domains found that have DNS uh, entries listed, but there's also a number of domains with no DNS record. Now that's interesting because it could uh, imply something that's maybe not public or an internal service that could be really interesting for us to explore. Now in particular, we can see that there is a a mail.corp, which could be an internal mail service. And if we attempt to resolve this on a public uh, server, we can see that the uh, permission was denied. That means that this corporate mail server is only accessible through Priceline's, I guess their internal network or maybe through their VPN network, and it's not available to external uh, users. So that means we've discovered a service that's internal and not something that the average person might be able to immediately find. Now, something else we can check out is maybe going through here, uh, this Splunks.corp. Now, if we take this and paste it into a browser window, we can actually see that it does resolve, but it reveals a little bit more information about what looks to be an employee login portal. Now, here we can even see a vendor that they're working with, Duo, which provides two-factor security, and that gives us, as an attacker, a lot more information about the company. Here, we've learned that they use two-factor security, we've learned the exact vendor that they use, and we've even located a portal which lets us know a, a web application here, and then the location of an internal resource. Now that's really cool because within a short period of time, we've been able to find all that information that normally would have taken us a lot of digging or even maybe getting into a, a private server or somewhere we're not supposed to be. 
Now here we can also type in another example just to see what kind of information comes up from a website that maybe has a little bit more cybersecurity aware administration. Let's try uh, wonderhowto.com. Now we, when we run wonderhowto.com, we can see there's only one domain found, which means wonderhowto is probably aware of this vulnerability and has taken steps to mitigate it. We can take another look and see maybe how an organization that's not famous for their cybersecurity might have done this by checking out, let's say, AAA.com. Now, some websites, if they have a lot of uh, certificates issued and they have a lot of subdomains under them, will have a lot of results. And in general, this can give us a ton of internal information. In this case, we have 420 domains from AAA.com that we can pour over and start finding interesting facts about. Now here we can see all the different regional and local um, chapters that they have uh, listed here, but we can also see services and things that might be internal for employees only and other sorts of things that maybe they don't want us uh, to know about because their cloud services or other uh, services they use could be vulnerable or have other issues with them that we can now start to check out. So finally, we'll take a look at a company that's famous for losing other people's data because it's great to see if they've learned anything from the experience. So let's check out Equifax.com. When we run the scan, we can see that they actually have a huge list of domains, which means perhaps they didn't learn that much. In fact, they even have more than AAA, which again is an organization that's not famous for their cybersecurity savvy. This means they have a lot of stuff for us to analyze and we might be able to find something in here. In fact, that might have been how they got hacked the first time. But as you can see, when we have a domain with a lot of results, you can find a variety of websites they might work with, partners they use, domains that they have uh, that do not resolve on a public server. And again, this can either be an internal, uh, something a, do a domain that you need to resolve when you're connected to their internal network or a VPN, or a URL that's been deleted and is no longer in use. As you can see, CT Exposer can provide a whole bunch of information about the public and private infrastructure of a target. That makes it popular amongst blue teams because it gives them a good understanding of what an attacker has to work with when they're crafting their attack. Now I have to thank Dev Null for sending me this tool because it's really awesome and he showed me on Twitter that this is a popular tool amongst the blue team village at DEF CON, so thank you for that. Now, that's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts, feedback, or if you want to send us a tool as well, make sure to send us a message on Twitter. We'll see you next time.